Welcome to the freshman course in real analysis lesson 5 and in this video I would be talking about the difference between three concepts subset, proper subset and superset. Although it sounds very trivial but sometimes these type of concepts crop up when we are learning real analysis and if you are not thorough with those concepts we sometimes face problem and it creates complexities and confusions. So in this video I would be talking about these three concepts and show you the difference with examples so that you don't face any problem when these type of concepts are coming in real analysis. First of all we would be dealing with what is a subset and a proper set. Well the first definition actually shows what is a proper subset. In other words if you say B is a proper subset of A then all elements of B are in A but A contains at least one element that is not in B. I will revisit this concept of subset uh, again but first let, let us understand that this simple example if A and B are sets and every element of A is also an element of B then obviously A is a subset of B and it is denoted by this one. So actually what happens is that A is also an element of B then A is a subset of B. So uh, and obviously B becomes a superset of A. We will come to this definition also. So if I take a very simple example A is a set of these numbers 1 to 5 and B from 1 to 10 then obviously we can call A is a subset of B. Why? Because every element of A is also an element of B plus B contains certain more elements and we denote it by this. This is a very simple understanding of what is a subset and this is denoted by this uh, by this sign. So you understand that there are two sets and one set is a subset because every element of the uh, first set is also an element of B. Okay, so this is actually the subset. So we mean subset has a few or equal elements equal to the set. As you can see, these are examples. If these are A and B, then A is a subset of B. Set A is included in set B. And it is used to denote containment of sets. That means it is containing uh, these sets. And this example is very trivial. So I think this is self-explanatory and I don't need to explain it further. Okay, if A is a subset of B, and but A is not equal to B, there should be something which is not equal to, then we call A is a proper subset or even we can call or a strict subset of B and we write it as this, right? Now or we write it as this also, A is a uh, proper subset of B. But in my previous video, if you have looked into it, it is still there in my, uh, I, I, I have given it in the playlist, you can go and click on the I button. You will see this signs actually sometimes comes very confusing. If you go and watch my earlier video, why uh, it is confusing and what are the problems that arises, I have discussed in my previous video, uh, clearing out the confusion. So I would recommend let us use this one, right? And uh, if A equals to 1, 2, 3 and B equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, then obviously A is not equal to B and because why the element 4 belongs to the set B, right? But it is absent in the main set that is A. So we have an element in set B which is obviously not a part of A and A is called then a proper subset of B and this is the best sign to denote although some uh, books and uh, mathematic mathematicians they use this sign but this is also used for other purpose. You can go and visit my video to clear up why this confusion arises. Okay, now this is actually calls proper subset and a strict subset. So it has a fewer elements than set. This is again an example just to say that A is a subset of B but A is not equal to B obviously because B has got certain other elements and this is the way if and not if A is a, prop, a, is a subset of B and A should not be equal to B. So in a tabular form, let us look uh, comparatively what are the differences between subset and proper subset. So if A is a subset of B, we can write it in this way. And if he's a proper subset of B, we can write it in this way. And then this sign denotes A is a subset of B and may A may or may not be equal to B. And this one sh shows that it is a subset, but obviously it won't be equal to B. So 1, 2, 3 is a subset of 1, 2, 3 and 1, 2, 3 is a subset of 1, 2, 3, 4 also. However, 1, 2, 3 is not a proper subset of 1, 2, 3 and this not subset can be denoted by this or with a tilde sign along with the subset sign. And we can say 1, 2, 3 is a proper subset of 1, 2, 3, 4. So this clears out our basic understanding of subset and proper subset. What is the definition now? We deal with subset and superset. 
this sign is actually used to denote superset and uh, we can use this s is a superset of t so this first one denotes that s is superset of t or equivalently t is a subset of s and this one also denotes every element of t is an element of s which denotes the possibility of s equals to 2 so the second symbol from the left hand side involves or allows the possibility equal and this first one doesn't allow the equal to so again i would request you to go to my previous video problems and confusions with set symbols where you will see this sign is actually used for this which actually means superset or equal to or superset of whereas this sign actually means superset of but obviously and obviously it includes that it is not equal to it means that it represents strictly superset but it should not be equal to so whenever there is equal to sign we put a straight line with along with the uh, corresponding set and subset uh, superset uh, symbols okay so here is uh, another example a superset is the opposite of subset it is a set that contains all the elements of another set possibly additional elements so this is how we denote a equals to 1 2 and b equals to 1 2 3 then b would be a superset of a few more important understanding of superset properties if a equals to 1 2 3 and b equals to 1 2 c then we can say a and b are both subsets and supersets of each other if i include a uh, phi which is a, a null set or an empty set it is also a proper subset of no every non-empty set universal set obviously is a superset of every set elements and consideration and we can draw this kind of a relation if a is a uh, subset of b and b is a subset of c then a is a subset of c and so on so this actually clears out uh, very quickly the difference between subset proper subset and superset i thought this is important because if this kind of concept arises in real analysis and we are not clear about that then it might create problems and obstacles in doing the proof based mathematical system thank you very much for watching this video i am immensely grateful for those who are supporting me constantly with constructive feedback feedbacks and your support please hit on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon to get all the notification from physics for students i'm always available in this number in this uh, in this email id which you can contact me and this is my other channel general relativity Expl explained you can follow me on my instagram facebook and linkedin channel i will be back and continuing with the real analysis until and unless we are done with the complete series of real analysis i'm continuing with sets few more one or two more videos because set is the foundation stone of uh, real analysis if you do not understand sets we won't be doing those uh, into real analysis so viewers who are thinking that why i am taking so much time to go into the real mathematics of real analysis just be there have patience because sets are very important physics for students will be back with yet another video and we will continue unless we are done with real analysis thank you very much for watching this video